Okay, it's Wednesday the 2nd of September. Yay! Writing the equation of line uh, should be something you remember really well from Algebra 1. So let's get started. Um, what you want is the slope times x plus the intercept. Right? y equals mx plus b. So this is what we're looking for. But this is where we start y minus y1 um, equals m times x minus x1. All right, so we have this formula, and this formula is going to magically change into this formula. That's what we want to have happen anyway. So uh, let's talk about what we know. We've got a point x, x1, y1, right? So that point is out here somewhere on this graph. And then we also know the slope. And so what we're going to do is put the numbers for the point right here and here. The x number has to go on the right, y number on the left. <laughs> the only way you can mess it up is to mix those up. So um, we're putting those points there, and then the slope has to go in the middle. So what does the question look like? Well, they're going to tell you the slope is 5 and the point is uh, let's try 2 negative 1 so what am I supposed to do well, I'm supposed to put slope right there so I am going to put the 5 where the M goes <laughs> and let's use a different color so we can see it Five goes right there. Yeah, baby. And then I need to put the point where it goes. So the x number is two. So I'm going to put two right here. Notice we're subtracting whatever the x number is. All right. And then the y number is negative one. So I'm going to subtract negative one. Negative one. All right. So look at what we have here y minus minus 1, so that's really plus. Let's fix that right now so we don't forget. And then equals 5 times this. Now, basic algebra, I know that you loved this when you were in Algebra 1 because it was so easy. Distributive property, that gives you 5x minus 10 equals y plus 1. We're not done until we subtract the 1. So y equals 5x minus 11. Now, this is the equation. Look, that's what we wanted it to look like. mx plus b, m is 5, b is negative 11. What does that mean even? Well, that means that um, it starts way down here at negative 11, goes over 1, up 5, 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 forever and ever and ever. And one of the points that it goes through is 2, negative 1. 1, 2, negative 1. That's one of the points it goes through. And see, we knew that already. So this is what it looks like. Um, so you need to be able to find the equation. We did that. Yay! Let's do it again. Um, how about we do one with fractions inside? All right, so I've got uh, slope. The slope is, we'll even do a negative fraction just because we can. How about that? Negative one fourth, and the point is negative eight one. Okay, so once again we start with this y minus y1. I'll write it out m times x minus x1. All right, so I know the one fourth goes right there, so I'll just write it right there one fourth x minus. Now this is negative 8, so when you subtract a negative 8, that goes there. And then this is y minus the y value, so y minus 1. Hoorah! Now, minus minus means plus. Let's get rid of that so we 
don't make a mistake. Now you have to distribute just like you did back in um, eighth grade or ninth grade whenever you took algebra one. So this times this looks like negative one fourth x. Yay! And then one fourth of eight. Now if you can't do it in your head, do it on your calculator. Do negative one fourth times eight should be negative two. I hope. I should use my calculator, huh? And then y uh, minus one. Okay? So what are we doing here? We have to get y by itself because it has to look like this guy up here. Right? It has to be y equals mx plus b. Right? So I'm going to add one here, add one there. y equals the slope is one fourth, and then negative two plus one is negative one. This is the equation of the line that starts at negative one, goes over four, up, or down one, over four, down one, over four, down one, over four, down one, goes just like that. Right? Now then, it tells us that way over here, at negative eight, it's right here, negative eight, it's up here at one. Right? This is negative 8, 1. That's what this point says right here. Right? So if I go over 4, down 1, over 4, down 1, over 4, down 1, over 4, down 1, that's my equation of that line. Nothing to it. Easy, smeezy. So let's do one that maybe is a little bit tougher, and then we'll be done. I think we'll stop after that. Okay, three today. I think there's only eight questions on today's homework, so that's good stuff. Another one with fractions. Fractions are our friends, don't forget. So this is our slope. So um, here's the slope. And then the point will be, let's try 6, 4. All righty. Oh, y minus the y number. So I'm just going to write 4 right there. Equals slope. And then x minus the x number. So there weren't any negatives. Like this one had a negative. That's why it was plus. But the formula. Where can I write the formula? The formula always says minus inside. So I had to do x minus 6 right there and I had to do y minus 4 right there. Right? Hoorah! I'm pretty happy today I guess. So y minus 4 equals negative 2 fifths of x and then you multiply this guy times this guy. So negative times negative is going to make it positive and then when you multiply whole numbers times fractions, you got to think back to fifth grade when you learn to multiply fractions and whole numbers. You only do the top, the top of the fraction times the whole number. So six times two, and then five times one, right? Because the whole number is over one. So six times two is twelve. Negative times negative is positive twelve over five. Hoo hoo! Well, we're almost there. Almost. So it's already looking a little messy because it's got fractions in it, but don't despair. Fractions are a friend. It's okay. Don't worry. So we have to add four. Now, my problem is you can't mix fractions and decimals. So you need to have it all the way like this. Okay? So, 4 is the same thing as 4 over 1, and when you're adding fractions, they have to have the same denominator, so that makes 20 over 5. So how did I do that? 4 over 1 is the same thing as 20 over 5. 5 divided by 20 is 4. See, we know that's true. So if I'm trying to make it the same, see I made the bottom 5, 5, 
So I had to multiply 5 times 4 to get the top. Okay? So adding this, 20 over 5, 12 over 5, is the one number 32 over 5. That's the answer. Now then, sometimes they allow you to... Um, Sometimes they allow you to use decimals, so I don't know if this is, well, it depends. We're not doing IXL today, so you can use fractions or decimals. It's okay. But um, whenever it's IXL all day, you're going to have to probably use fractions the whole way. Um, so if you, if you use decimals in this one, it's okay. Like I said, today it's in the book. You can use decimals. Two fifths is that, and then um, 32 divided by five. Five goes in there six times. Where two left over. So if you wrote it as a as a decimal, that one would also. That looks like it's part of the answer. There we go. Um, that's the answer as well as a decimal, right? So if you love decimals more than fractions. That's a sad thing. Fractions are our friends. But you can write your answer like that today. Um, depends on what the question asks. In the um, book, it doesn't make any difference, I don't believe. But on IXL, sometimes they'll say, write your answer fraction, and that's all they take. You know, you can be perfectly right and write it this way, and they won't take it. So be aware. Today we're doing stuff out of the book. So that's it. I am done talking. Now you can go to uh, your textbook and do today's homework. Bye.